Hello and welcome to the shooting show. This week I'll be taking Pulsar's Thermion 2 Pro outfoxing. So this evening I'm out foxing on this uh, small bit of ground. Um, you may recognise it, it was actually here the other week foxing. Uh, the only difference was I was sat in high seat and the grass was about knee high so I was struggling a little bit but now all these fields have all been cut and uh, so I'm hoping that there's bound to be one or two foxes out and about on it as uh, those only cut a day or two ago so chances are there'll be one or two foxes wandering around. So um, just going to have a little walk from one field to the next, maybe sit in the high seat, put the core out perhaps but for now I'm just going to walk onto the next couple of fields and just have a look. So as always I'm using the Pulsar Accolades, these are the Pro 2s. I really like these, they're a little bit heavier than a lot of thermals these days but um, having that laser rangefinder in there is really useful. So yeah I just like them, just get on well with them, find them pretty clear. So all round, nice units. Um, I've also got with me the uh, Thermion Pro 2 rifle scope, which is a thermal rifle scope. Uh, it's the LRF model, so it's also got a laser rangefinder built into it. So I'm spoiled for a choice of which laser rangefinder to use this evening. So, there she is. Bit of a beast of a unit, but quite useful having a built-in laser rangefinder if you're uh, just using a little small handheld thermal spotter. So if, like me, you've got ground where you've got sort of um, some big open areas, then uh, it's definitely useful having a laser rangefinder at night. How are we doing now? Hey! Hey! Woo! Good. Well, that's one down for the evening. Just spotted him sat next to the hedge here, and um, he was already looking at me. So I think he already knew I was here, and uh, just set the tripod up, stuck the uh, rifle on there, and he walked. He was just trotting down towards the bottom wood there, and just managed to get the rifle up onto him to give him a shout. Stopped him. Job done. Let's go down and have a look. A vixen. Excellent. That was uh, shot from over there, which was uh, 
125 yards. So, not a massively long distance, but good start to the evening. Alright, so I'll just leave this fox here by the gate for a minute and I'll pick up all the way back and be lucky that way in the fields. It's quite a bit of mist coming in, just sitting low across the fields here, but uh, that's a good thing with thermal, it doesn't, doesn't affect it. Um, if that had been uh, night vision, you'd probably just be getting the IR bouncing straight back off of it. So definitely a plus for using thermal. Oh, so I'm gonna put the cooler out in this field. Surprisingly, just because all the fields have all been cut, there's no deer in the field. Normally, you'd, every one of these fields you'd see deer in, but uh, nothing at all, mate. So it's obviously pushed them off. at the moment. Nice big double high seat with a good view out across this field. There's nothing out there at the moment but I've put the, uh, the cooler out about 70 yards away probably. So uh, hopefully if anything comes running into this field then um, I should get a good chance to get, to get onto it. It's quite a big field this so uh, Good sort of 350 metres the other end there. Uh, I did just try and ping that a minute ago, but that's one thing you will find when there's a bit of mist and that, a bit of, or a bit of fog, the uh, laser range find doesn't work too well, it bounces back off of that. But it must have just cleared a little bit across the field there because I can get it now. There's a couple of rabbits right out in the middle of the field there. Other than that, there's nothing about outside. We get the cooler going. I'll try a baby rabbit distress call first. That's a pretty good call. Of different calls actually and um, nothing's worked to bring anything in um, probably what I do is just hang about for a couple of minutes just sit here quietly just in case there's any uh, any uh, late arrivals to the party sometimes you get a fox or um, come in from some distance and it take them a little while to get here it might be that you've turned the call off and been ready to pack up and go and he's just arrived so Definitely worth keeping an eye out for a couple of minutes. The other thing foxes sometimes do is they're a bit unsure. Sometimes they sit on the edge of cover and they'll just watch the field just to see what's going on. You turn that cooler off and then they might sit there for another couple of minutes, then curiosity gets the better of them and they have to come in and have a little look. The times I've um, been set out calling and then thought no nah, nothing coming there and been just about to get down the high seat with all the gear all packed up and then one last little scan around the field and hey, oh, there's a fox out there
Hey! Hey! Fox number two down. He was just out in that field mousing around, just making the most of that short grass. And um, he was only, uh, well, I just ranged it, he was 60, 67 metres, I think it was, 62, 67, one of the two. So he's only just, just out there a little bit. And uh, same again, just give him a little, little shout just to stop him, stop him walking about, get him to look around. And um, textbook. Job done. All right, let's go and pick him up and head back up to the truck. Right, again, there's another vixen. Excellent. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's a point of impact. Well, that was particularly difficult. It was only 60 odd metres, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's spot on. In fact, it was uh, really easy to zero this uh, scope. I think I zeroed it in about four or five shots. They've got the uh, the freeze function on the um, on the zero menu, so you can freeze the screen, which makes it a lot easier to be able to move that auxiliary crossover onto the point of impact. So yeah, it was an absolute doll to zero it. So that was good. Right, so we've had a pretty good evening this evening. I uh, managed to get a couple on the deck, so that's... Got that one coming into the field. So that's the fox I've just shot. As you can see, it's good squarely hit in the chest, but it still didn't drop straight away. He won't go anywhere, but uh, yeah, that was, um, I think that was 137 metres, I think I uh, ranged that at. So a little bit further. But yeah, another one down. Well, so that's three for the evening. I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it there. There's probably one or two more about still, but. Uh, I think the farm would be pleased just to get a few less on the ground. Uh, but yeah, as I say, uh, as I said earlier, the um, cut fields, it's always a draw for foxes, they love it. The grass is short like that, and uh, mouse around that. So. Right, home to bed. Thanks for watching. So today we're shooting over a early winter barley stubble. Uh, with the aim to actually be protecting some winter wheat, uh, standing winter wheat, which is about two fields back. Uh, farmer's given me a call, he's had birds that are now moving into the milky um, tops of the, of the wheat. Uh, and this actual opportunity gives me a perfect situation to advance decoy them off the line to birds that are going to that wheat uh, and actually shoot them over the stubble. 
um, without actually out effect, without uh, affecting that standing weed. So in a situation like this, if I have to shoot the standing crop, I will. Um, but if I can work around it, so for example, um, decoy a stubble like this, decoy some grass, advance decoy them onto something that means that I can stay away from the actual standing crop, I will. Uh, purely from a shooting point of view, also picking birds, it's so much easier. Uh, but offers another form of actually um, controlling pigeons on a crop that you're not actually shooting over. So when I set my hides, um, <clears throat> when I'm just using nets and uh, not using any sort of natural cover, <clears throat> I always use eight poles um, purely for stability. But I also, I, I, all my hides are always make in a circle. Um, the reason being that when you put your nets up, it actually knocks off those sort of square edges that you're not wanting. Um, and I always want to try and maximise my angles from a shooting point of view. So I'll always pull myself away um, from a hedge line, from a tree so that I actually increase my shooting angles, um, maximise my chances of actually uh, building a better bag. Um, I do put myself out in the field quite a bit, but it all depends on who's with me. So for example, today I've got a Ollie filming, um, and with that in mind, <coughs> I have to take into account two people. Um, using these new nets that have been sent to me by um, Nighthawk, uh, so they're sort of giddy nets. It's a really good idea. So far I've used them on the peas mainly and a few laid crops. They've worked okay. Um, but I need to give them a real good testing through the year before I can give you an honest answer on what I think of them. But idea's good and so far they're, they're working all right. So uh, that's what the giddy nets look like. Um, with regards to when you're doing your hides, <coughs> Uh, I will brash up quite a lot. This actually, the way this netting works actually saves you from having to brash up if you need to brash up. Uh, you've got to remember that there's so many different colours in the British countryside, so just using block green nets or those <coughs> nets that are um, yeah, sort of those lightweight kind of see-through jobs. I'm not a big fan, they're a bit too shiny. Um, yeah, you've, you've got to think about think about your surroundings and that's where I think the idea with these nets is sort of coming in and you can sort of see it does blend in fairly nicely and so far so good on the outings that I've used them um, there's a long way to go before I can actually give an opinion um, when when I've made my hide you'd always sort of take a step back and then look back in and I don't mean just by sort of you know five yards away you want to actually take a step back and walk out to the field and actually have a proper look um, it's very important hide location but actually making a proper hide that you can actually shoot from comfortably, see birds arriving, um, but also you know, the main thing is that they can't see you. Set this up and I do it with all of my shooting. I don't use patterns. Uh, I'm not a strong believer in patterns. I believe that patterns are actually there for the benefit of the shooter. They're there to create killing zones. What I do and how I decoy depends on the time of year and the crop I'm shooting over, but it's dictated by all of my recon. So I will literally copy what I watch in my recon. So if I'm seeing a small group here and a small group there, uh, and their spacing is varied, uh, basically how they're behaving, that actually dictates how I'll actually decoy the situation. Now because, and I always normally, 90% of the time I'll always use dead birds, but because of the threat of rain today, um, I've started with plastics uh, using enforcer decoys. They are the best on the market, there's lots of uh, decoys, I call them examples of decoys is the best way to describe them because most of them are absolutely rubbish. Uh, but the enforcers are certainly the best on the market. And the reason I use them with the threat of rain is if I've got dead birds out there and you suddenly get a heavy downpour, it really blackens the dead birds up and they almost just sort of, it, it almost ruins them as a decoy um, from a visual to anything oncoming and they can actually stop to work effectively. Whereas with your plastics, uh, you can, you know, it's very easy just to to, sh to shake the rain off. Um, as that threat of rain disappears, then obviously I'll then um, replace dead birds. You, you, know, you just can't beat them. And they're, they're so versatile, you can do so much with a dead bird uh, with regards to movement, breaking wings, hanging them in cradles, all that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, so that's, that's basically the plan for this afternoon. It's purely dictated by what may happen with the weather. So we hope, we hope it will hold off and then we can get really stuck in.
Beautiful. It's such a sort of fairly green, wouldn't you say? So it's a light shower, but stuff still comes. Um, it's when it gets really heavy. And in my wisdom, having said to you before about putting dead birds out, it's like the commentator's curse. As soon as I put them out, this rain started again. So a very important thing in the job is, and it does happen, you get wounded birds, okay? Um, obviously we try as hard as we can, but on the odd occasion you do get a wounded bird. How you dispatch that bird quickly is very, very important. Not swinging it around by its neck, okay? Take a hold of the bird like so, cupped, okay? So it reduces the stress. Remove its head till you can feel it becomes tight. And that's it, okay? That is, that is the fastest, uh, most less or less stressful way and the best way to dispatch a pigeon if you get the odd wounded bird. Okay, really important. It's, it's raining again. Good old summer showers, eh? Uh, how are we getting on as the afternoon progresses? Uh, I wish Ollie wasn't standing there because there's birds coming in here. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, not too bad. Um, we're on 20 odd, which early afternoon, I'm hoping this will kick on through till about six, half six, depending on what they want to do. I'm losing a few that just, just going a bit wider, me just trying to just creep out to that wheat. Um, as I said at the start, trying to advance and they don't really want to come to the stubble, it's only two days old. Um, but you know, we're, um, we're dragging a few in, uh, certainly a few within shot, which is uh, my aim. But so far, um, yeah, sort of on course for that 50 I hope, um, and anything better uh, is a bonus. So we'll keep plodding along. He's committed, all you order is just control the shot and deliver the lethal blow. Today it mostly been raining. In the clay world, a bit chippy. Bit chippy. He's coming to join his irresistible friends. Mm. 
You've got commitment issues, Ollie. It's suddenly become a very, very strange light, and they're just looking black against that hedge. And you just lose sight of them. Um, so if I can't see their vitals, I can't see them properly, I'm not going to shoot at them. Well, I hope you enjoy the program as much as we've enjoyed filming it. We've decided to pull stubs as we are now getting absolutely soaked. Our kit's absolutely soaked. Uh, those short rain spells that I spoke of earlier have turned into a full-blown storm. Uh, we've finished on 63, so not a bad outing. I was hoping to finish on 6 o'clock, uh, but it's been a pleasure. Hope you enjoy it and see you guys soon. All the best. If you aren't a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.